Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It is 2023. This is my first video for the new year. I guess it's been I'm close to four weeks or so since my last video. And in that time, we actually surpassed uh, 10,000 subs on here. And uh, it's something I, don't, I, I don't, really had no expectations to uh, ever see when I started this, this channel. So I appreciate those of you who have subscribed and I hope that the information that I'm sharing in regards to photography is helping y'all out. So uh, thank y'all and uh, I'm hoping that this uh, upcoming year is gonna be another one of really cool photo shoots and information that I can put on here and share with y'all. And today I thought we'd kick off uh, this year with kind of a <laughs> kind of a bang, I guess. Uh, I mean, what better way to do that than compare and contrast uh, two of the most popular uh, digital uh, camera brands out there right now. And I just so happened to have the opportunity to get my hands on uh, the Sony A7R5. It, this, let me say too from the onset that this is not a sponsored video by Canon or by Sony. I know there's been some stuff out there about some other uh, YouTube channels which are switching camera brands and people accusing them of being paid off and all that kind of stuff. But none of that's going on here. I had a uh, opportunity to get this camera for a just amazing deal. And I had a, I've got some uh, shoot coming up that I'm gonna need extra uh, resolution, which I'll on that I will probably use my GFX Fuji system. Uh, and then maybe use this one as a backup for that with the 60 megapixel sensor. But uh, what I wanted to do is put it to work. I had a photo shoot uh, earlier this week and was able to use this camera for the first time and thought I would just kind of share my thoughts and impressions when it comes to using this camera and having used uh, the Canon R5 for a couple years now. So that's what I thought I would do today. And we'll take a look at the uh, behind the scenes uh, lighting setup from the shoot and then kind of jump into uh, these two cameras. So maybe we'll throw it back 2020 style and roll that intro. Hey. All right, so I thought we would start out with the uh, behind the scenes from the photo shoot that I was referencing. Beach volleyball, uh, always a rough day. I've got uh, my fill light there, which is a medium uh, umbrella, Westcott. My apple box there is kind of my position, and we'll kind of get a full view here of the lighting setup. I've got one, two, three, four, five, uh, six lights, counting the one behind me. On the uh, left here is a. Uh, Large umbrella for part of the uh, edge. It's a seven foot Westcott. Then I've got a just a reflector with a yellow gel acting as our sun. Another reflector, no gel on the right hand side. I've got, uh, you can see, uh, I've got two Einsteins on that side and two on the other side lighting up my psych wall there. And then there's a strip um, box uh, on that side too that uh, it acts as the other edge. And you can kind of see uh, everything, how it looks from the uh, player's standpoint. All right, so you saw the lighting set up there. And as I mentioned earlier, I had just a great opportunity to grab uh, this camera uh, at, a, at a great price. I did pay for it. As I mentioned, this is not sponsored by anybody. Uh, but I just thought in the, the spirit of this channel that I would share my impressions. I know uh, some folks are um, really passionate about one brand or the other. Uh, I'm not really in that camp. I, I picture these or I view these as tools. Uh, and it is a, uh, let me just say too, like you just cannot go wrong with using uh, Canon or Sony. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's what we deliver to our clients. And uh, these companies, as well as a couple others, are really making our lives. Uh, much easier than it used to be to deliver a fantastic product and you can't like you just can't go wrong uh, in either either one of these systems it's very similar to the uh, strobe comparison I did in my uh, previous video uh, and it's I mean it's a great great time to be in this business uh, when it comes to uh, just having the just the extreme range of tools that we have at our at our disposal that are just make things so much easier than, I mean, just go back, thinking back several years ago, 
uh, and this stuff was just all it, I mean, it's just a dream to, to, to use. So anyway, let's get into uh, kind of, you know, my thoughts on this. And, and before, let me, and I'll jump back a little bit further. So uh, I started uh, my professional career using Nikon cameras and the uh, DSLR systems. And um, it got to, and I, I followed Nikon uh, all the way up to the D850s. And you can go back in the, the history of this channel and see, uh, me using those cameras and then making the hard decision to jump to mirrorless. Uh, I knew at that point that I needed to switch systems to kind of get the best of what was out there. And I did look at both of uh, these systems. Coming from, uh, I guess, the Nikon system and, uh, and what I was kind of used to, uh, Canon filled that uh, role for me. And there are a couple different, and probably two major things. And one, let's just start, one was the aesthetics of the camera. Uh, just the the shape, the feel in the hand, um, everything kind of going on, uh, top screen that Canon has, uh, all of that is appealing, still appealing to me to uh, to this day. Sony is more of like a, I don't know, maybe like a piece of steel or something. It's uh, just a whole different kind of feel over here. You've got some, uh, I wouldn't say sharp edges, but they're they're definitely not rounded uh, as you kind of get over here on this. The the grip. Uh, it's it's a nice grip, but it's not as nice as what Canon's got going on. And these are this is my opinion. I do like the texture on here, but it's more of a cold kind of plastic, I guess, feel. Uh, where this is just a little bit smoother and just feels a little bit better in your hand. I, and I don't have that big of hands, but I. I I'd, I'd lose my pinky here on this camera, and then it kind of digs into my, my palm a little bit on the back side, whereas with the Canon, I've got room for all of my fingers. Obviously, you can get a battery grip like I have on uh, my other R5, which I switched back and forth when I'm on shoots. I just wasn't going to invest in, in all that stuff uh, just one time out. Uh, but you can get your battery grip, and that'll, that'll help with that. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sharing anything that's not known. Also, there's, there's no top screen on the Sony. There's, you've got a lot of real estate here, but that was, you know, one, one kind of big difference. And I do like the top screen because I refer to it kind of during my shoots. It's just a quick way to glance at your camera, make sure your settings are where you're, they're supposed to be. Uh, I know I'm not the only one that's hit a dial here or there and changed the setting and something all of a sudden is off and I can quickly look at that screen and tell. Uh, here, you know, you're gonna have to look at the, the back screen or through the LCD or through the uh, viewfinder uh, to kind of figure out what's going on. So that is uh, just one kind of difference. Another thing kind of ergonomically too, I do kind of like on the Sony, everything is on you know, one side so you can access basically almost everything you need to on that one side of the camera. Uh, on the uh, Canon, um, you, you've got uh, your on and off over here. It's basically pretty similar, um, just a little more, I think, concise on uh, the Sony over here. When we get to the inside, another kind of uh, big decision-making uh, factor for me were the menu systems, and uh, the Canon menu system is probably, it, to me, it's more intuitive than what I was used to in the actual in the Nikon. So it was an easier progression to this camera. The Sony back in the and this is several years ago. Uh, back in that time was super, at least to me, uh, super complex. Once again, you get into these systems and you get used to whatever menu system is 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 presented with you, and and it becomes kind of uh, second nature. But just kind of starting out fresh on these. This one was much more intuitive. Now I will say on this A7R5, and I'm not a Sony expert, but from what I've read and before I got this camera, they've kind of revamped the menu system in here and I found it uh, to be really intuitive. They got like a quick menu section where you can kind of really get to uh, what you need to get to if you need to change some things around. And so it wasn't all that complicated uh, to figure out and I mean, there are probably still some things that I need to figure out on this camera, uh, but uh, I, that was not off-putting um, whatsoever, as I, unlike I felt when I was first looking at jumping into mirrorless. So I think Sony has improved on that aspect. So after using the Sony, let's kind of go back and, and let me look at the Canon again and some things that I've noticed that I like probably more, I guess, on this camera uh, than this camera. One thing uh, is, it just <laughs> undoubtedly on every photo shoot, uh, I, I get halfway through or so, 
and the overheat uh, light on this warning light on this camera starts blinking on the back screen. I know it doesn't affect the photo into things. I just wish that they could uh, take that off of the back screen and then maybe if you switch to video, then it would kind of let you know that, hey, camera's too hot to shoot in a certain mode or it's about to overheat. It's just a little disconcerting when I'm sitting there in a photo shoot doing stuff and this red light is, is blinking at me like, you know, something's going going wrong. So it's something minor, but it's something that is not happening over here. Um, it just kind of is what it is. And that, that's just kind of always bugged me from the first shoot that I had with this camera. Another huge thing is more uh, with the Canon system than it is just with like the R5 here. And it is just the fact that we don't have access to third party lenses with Canon. That, I guess that announcement came out a couple months ago and then when this opportunity came along, that was definitely on my mind uh, when it came to, hey, maybe I'll, I will give a Sony camera a try. Because you know, I think back to when I was shooting with the DSLR, probably half of my lenses were third party lenses and they weren't as good as they are now. And you just have a lot of options out there uh, from companies like Sigma and Tamron and they offer some amazing lenses for uh, you know half the price of what like the native RF glass in Canon's case costs. I mean, you know, your G Master glass is gonna be super expensive but you do have the option to get like a Sigma art lens or something like that at, at you know half or a third of the cost. You just don't have that option here, and uh, I, I think that's the wrong move. Uh, another thing is the fact that Canon will uh, kind of, and you call it the Canon cripple hammer, but it will impede uh, their cameras from containing some features like the C70 with C Log 2 on the video end of things. I think on the photo end of things, they're, you know, it's it's pretty much, uh, you know, they're giving you about pretty much. What, what you're expecting from a camera at this price. But then when you switch to video, there's some things that are crippled, I guess to say, for lack of a better word, uh, so that I guess, you know, as a company, a camera like this at this price point is not going to cannibalize some of their more cinema line cameras that are more expensive. So you've got that issue going along with the no third party, third party lenses. To me, that's just a little disconcerting. I don't like when my choices are, I'm just, kind of just pinned into uh, you know one brand for you know lenses and stuff I mean they're fantastic but they are expensive so that's a plus on the, the Sony side huge plus another thing uh, in using uh, these cameras uh, that I noticed the, on the Sony that's different uh, the port covers uh, on like the R5 here is just kind of these flimsy little plastic um, pieces that you have to move out of the way and then when you're rigging it out for different things if you have a mic and stuff uh, in tethering for uh, you know still photography uh, these just kind of flap around uh, and, and do kind of what they do uh, and I feel like the Sony system just a little more polished they've got these nice doors that that flip out uh, and they're just solid uh, here's another one right here and then, you know, and flipping out these doors, it takes me, it shows the, like the uh, full HDMI uh, cable that they have, or uh, input here that they have on this camera, whereas you have the smaller uh, micro. To be honest, a lot of people make a big fuss of that. I haven't had an issue with uh, that, but I can see, it's just nice having a, a more of a solid foundation when you were plugging in HDMI to run to like a monitor. And that's like on the C70, we've got the full HDMI there. Uh, and plus, then you've got to get other cables with the micro. Uh, but I'm going to save, I've, I've saved, I guess, the, the biggest difference for last. And it is the difference in the flip screen mechanism. So let's start with the Canon that I've been used to. Uh, you've got your simple or your, your basic or standard, I guess I should say, you know, flip out screen where you can flip it out, uh, maneuver it. Uh, up and down for your different angles. You can also set it to where you can obviously see it on the back of the camera, which is how I normally use it when I'm shooting. But when it's in this position, it's it's locked. You can't tilt it. So if you need to tilt, you've got to flip it out uh, out to here. And where this kind of becomes an issue, uh, and let me, <laughs> let me say too, that, I mean, all of this is just fantastic, but uh, as we move along with the technology, just some companies are starting to do it better than others. 
So when I've got this flipped out and I'm tethered, I've got a cable coming out here and I can't, if I need to get the camera down low, I can't tilt it uh, or rotate it very far. I mean, probably, you know, about like that and I start hitting the cable. And that becomes an issue. So when I'm shooting with like um, a football team and I've got linemen that go down in their stance and uh, I mean, back in, like I said, back in the old days, I'd have to get you know, prone on the ground. I still do it, uh, you know, at some of these shoots. And I've got to look through the viewfinder and I, I do feel that's the best way to do it. But um, an easier way uh, to do it is to use the screen, lower the camera and, and shoot that way, shooting off the screen. But I'm, I'm hampered by the tether cable like that. Plus, I'm off axis of the lens. So, and, you know, and also this screen doesn't line up completely flat uh, with the camera, like in a straight line. So, I mean, there's just a couple of things with that. That, I'm, you know, it's, like I said, it's, it's a great thing to have a LCD that big on the back of your camera. But Sony, with, their, with this, this is their latest camera, and this is new to their cameras, and they just have come up with uh, an amazing mechanism on the back here. So, like I, like I said, it's, uh, it not only flips out, it also, you can, you can tilt it, you can, you can tilt it up against the camera, you can bring it out and tilt it, uh, where you can go up. If I've got a cable coming out of the camera, this uh, is not being affected by that whatsoever. You can also tilt it down, so if you are, you've got to raise your camera and get those uh, higher shots, like down facing, you, you've got that option there. And then at the end of the day, you can flip it out uh, just like uh, the Canon here. So, and then you can, even with that, you can bring this mechanism out why it's flipped out and you can do all kinds of different things uh, depending on what is going on. What's really nice though about this tilt when you're behind the camera and you don't need to see the screen on the other side is that you remain on axis with your lens. So you're not kind of looking over here and off axis. Um, it might sound like a, a you know, a minor thing, but I promise you, you use a lens or you use a, a monitor or a screen that's out to the side to see what you're doing. And you're over here kind of looking and your lens is over here, whereas right here you are lined up straight through uh, the camera. And I just think this is fantastic. I hope it's not pr just proprietary for uh, Sony. There might be some other, I'm not sure if some um, like Panasonic or something might have something similar to this, but I'm hoping that like the next generation of you know, Canon cameras have this screen uh, on their cameras. That is a, just an amazing piece of tech uh, and how they've done that, it's, it's just been, that, that was the biggest thing, and, and using this camera compared to this camera, is having that screen do what it does. I, I mean, I could, take, I could talk about that all day long, but uh, <laughs> we need to move on. And excuse me for looking over here, I got my, my sheet of facts. All right, so let's talk about just like using this camera. As I mentioned earlier, it's got a 60 megapixel sensor in it. And for my use case in this photo shoot that I uh, showed or am showing, uh, that was pretty overkill for what I needed. And it slowed down my, I was tethered to my older iMac and that computer was chugging. It was, it was chugging on those files. Uh, it actually uh, struggles a bit with the uh, R5 files and so you add that extra um, file size. And I'll kind of show the difference here on the screen. Uh, between these two cameras when you're using this one, the A7R5, at full resolution, uh, there's a considerable difference. And that being said, you can uh, set this camera up to shoot at uh, lower raw file sizes, so which is really nice. So you can take, you can set it to uh, raw medium, I believe, which is like 26 megapixels, and then you can go to a smaller size, which is uh, about 15. Yeah, 15 megapixels. So, it it you you do have the option to kind of circumvent that, uh, and which is nice. But first time out with this camera, I was gonna you know take it full resolution and really kind of see what this guy would do. And as far as image quality, I mean, it did not disappoint. Uh, you know, it, I was not having an issue with image quality out of the Canon R5 either. So. Like I said earlier, you cannot go wrong with either one of these systems. You just got to figure out what it is uh, 
what these cameras offer and how it best fits for uh, your pro process and then what it is that you shoot. Uh, and, you know, as I said too, both these companies offer different level cameras. And if I were to, you know, I'm looking at the Sony's, if I were to, I guess, construct um, my perfect use case Sony for what I'm doing a lot, which is a studio photography, I would probably look something and maybe it's a dream of the, instead of the A7R5, maybe the A7 V, which hasn't come out yet, where you've got a 30 something megapixel sensor, which would take me back kind of the Nikon days of the D800 with the 36 megapixels. Uh, so, you know, you get in that 30 megapixel range, um, you include this really nice EVF, and then you, you have to include the screen uh, mechanism. So I think you put all those three together with the fantastic video uh, capabilities of the Sony cameras, and that would be a really standout, that would be a just a super, super camera. So I will, I'm gonna have my eyes on that. I'm not, not, you know, jumping systems or any of that kind of thing. But I mean, if Sony were to come out with a camera like that, I would definitely be interested in taking a look. So, as I mentioned, uh, this is just my impressions of using a different camera system. That about does it, I believe. So if you feel like this video um, is worthy, please give it that thumbs up. Any comments, questions, y'all drop them down there in the comment section below. For more content uh, just like this, you know, hit that uh, subscribe button. And uh, you can also follow me on social media at Quants Photo on Instagram and Twitter. Y'all, please stay safe and healthy out there. And I will see y'all soon here in the next one.